Well, today it's back seam day, and hopefully we can go from this to this. So today is back seam day. Now if you've watched my previous videos, you'll know that I've installed a wooden batten that runs right along this side um, of the room. Um, and the room is about 5.2 metres wide. And I'll have three boards along here. Now fortunately for me, um, the boards aren't against the wall. I can put the back seam up and have full reach across onto the wall. So it kind of, um, it's somewhat easier than um, if you've already laid your, your boards down in your track. So having watched other YouTubers putting up their back scenes, I went to a company called artprinters.com. I think it's art-printers.com. I took a look at their, their back scenes. Um, and as I wanted one that goes from sort of the countryside into a town area, but with a light industrial unit, I found these back scenes. So they're called, um, these are ID back scenes and um, this particular series is series 239, industrial pack A and industrial pack B. Each pack is 10 foot long and it comes in, in, in two scrolls. Um, and the whole uh, scene has a white border. So you'll have to scalpel off the vertical borders, the end borders. Um, you may choose to take off the other borders, but for me, because I've got a white background, I'm going to leave the white top border on. There are several ways to mount these back scenes onto your wall or surface or whatever. Um, there's basically two fundamental choices with the backgrounds. You either get the plain paper, which is 180 uh, GMS, or you get the sticky back back scene, which is slightly more expensive. And I've opted for... Um, the one without the sticky back because of putting it onto wall I thought it would be easier to use a wall wallpaper type paste to put it up. It also in the instructions just mentions that you could use double sided sticky tape but having been to, uh, just down to B&Q and bought um, some Solvite I also looked at the price of the double sided sticky tape and to do this, uh, this room I think it costs about £30 in, double pack in, in the sticky tape whereas actually the rolls themselves only came in at about £25. So if I make a complete balls of it, I can always just get a new roll. Um, but I thought that, I would, that the, what, the wallpaper back scene would be better. The walls themselves are just finished in white emulsion and they might look flat, but they're not. They are quite uneven. Um, so I am prepared for a, for a few problems. Um, the time's 10 to 3. I hope to finish this by about 6 o'clock. Um, and clearly this video isn't going to be three hours long, um, but I'll try and do it in real time um, when it comes to putting up, up the back scenes. In a previous video, which hopefully you should see a card here, I used a laser leveller. And I use the laser leveller again um, to show how I will put the line across the top of the, uh, where the back scene will go. So hopefully I can keep the back scene straight as it goes along. So what I'm going to do now is I'll just show you what paste I used so that you'll, if you decide to paste yours, you can take the lead from mine. If it goes disastrously wrong, you'll know not to follow it. And I said I went to B&Q and I didn't buy B&Q zone. I sort of went at market and I bought a bag of Solvay all purpose wallpaper adhesive, extra strong, mixes in 20 seconds, hangs up to 10 rolls. Um, this isn't expensive, I think it was just under £5 a bag. Um, and when I mix it up, I'll let you know the mixing ratio that I used with this particular paper. This is the laser level that I used previously. Um, it is hazardous to, uh, to your eyesight to turn it on and there hopefully you can see um, the laser on my hand. And when we put it on the wall, If I zoom in, hopefully you can see that it scribes a line along the wall. And you can make sure that your back scene is level. So what I'm going to do is measure um, up from the, the batten the width of my board, 
then the width of gap I want the back scene uh, before the back scene starts. Now there is nothing, my back scene is not going to go all the way down and touch the board. There will never be um, a, an area like that. There will always be trees, shrubs, buildings or whatever. So it's going to be um, uh, a couple of inches up um, from the board, then an inch up to the back scene, and then the back scene comes up 15 inches. So what I'm going to do now is scribe a line along the top of the studio, uh, yeah, along the top of the room, um, using the, uh, the laser light uh, to get the light in the right place so I'll know where to go. I'll also scalpel off the edges of the back scenes to, so to remove the white borders um, and then we'll start mixing up the paste and see how it goes from there. So from the top of the baton to where I want the uh, top of the back scene to be, I've worked it out as 470 mil. So I mark that off and at 470 mil, that's where I need to place the laser leveller. Obviously it's not a necessity to have one of these devices, but for me it just seems to make things a lot easier. And at the end of the day it's accuracy that really matters because what you don't want is the oops what you don't want is the back scene to be come on you son. just a case of either borrowing one from a friend or using a uh, spirit level and then just working your way along. So hopefully if I zoom in a little bit you might be able to see the laser line that comes out of the side here. So all I'm going to do now is work my way along put a line up where I need the baton at uh, the uh, top of the the top of the back scene to be you couldn't make it up could you Okay, so that's the light drawn across the, the room. So all I need to do now is to um, scalpel off the, the vertical uh, white borders from the back scene and then I'll show you how they come together. Right, with a fresh scalpel blade, this is the first sheet. I almost started on the wrong sheet first off. Um, and I think the name of the game is to try to do this as cleanly as possible. Um, you know, without other stuff getting in your way and, um, you know, without the wallpaper paste being around. Um, just keep the env your environment you're working in as clean as possible. Um, and then take off this white edge with the minimum amount of background. So with a fresh blade on a cutting mat. And then check you've got no white line on the edge of the paper, which we haven't. That's the edge that will go in the corner. And then this is the first edge that will butt against the next sheet. And obviously you want the minimum amount of, of the photo to be removed. Great, okay. So 
now all we need to do is mix up some wallpaper paste and see how we get on. Now the image itself on the, on the rolls is 15 inches high, um, but obviously with the white border on top and bottom, it comes just under 15 and a half. So what I've done now, and hopefully you can see, is I've measured down 15 and a half inches uh, from the top line, and I've inscribed another line right across the, right across the studio um, to help me guide it through. And then what that will do is also is give me a pair of lines um, between which to apply the wallpaper paste. Um, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to measure, um, I think they're in five foot length, so I'm going to measure out and then mark up how far each roll of paper will come. And then th I think what I'm going to do is paste half the roll at a time um, and then get that piece up and, and then uh, continue on along the, uh, the wall. Wish me luck. Um, it's worth mentioning the, the tools I've got with me today, which are basic kind of tools really. This is a wallpaper uh, brush and you don't put paste on it. What you do is you tend to brush out the bubbles uh, that may form behind uh, the wallpaper with this very, very soft wallpaper brush. Um, and that's the brush I'm going to use, ordinary kind of 8 inch emulsion brush or 6 inch emulsion brush I suppose it is. Um, and I use that to put the paste onto the wall, um, dirty old screwdriver to stir it up um, and a small plastic bowl um, which I'll mix the paste in and I'll just go through uh, that in a second to sort of show you the ratios that I'm going to try and hope for. And the consistency I'm after, um, it's hard to say, but, but reasonably kind of runny. Um, it's not a water absorbent paper, I don't believe. Um, unlike wallpaper, which kind of draws all the, the paste in, this doesn't do that, so you shouldn't need as much paste. If this fails, I thought about what I would do next and, uh, and having done away with the double-sided sticky tape, what I thought I would do just in case this does go to rats is I would scrub the walls off and get all the wallpaper paste. And the next thing I would try is using a can of 3M mount spray and then uh, spray the wall and then try to put the paper on there. Um, I'm just trying to figure out you know, ways around it. I don't know the easy way of doing things. Um, I've seen other people do it with PVA um, using PVA paste onto uh, plywood and then putting that on and that seems to work just fine but what I don't want to do because I've actually got solid walls it just seems much more simple just to put it straight on. So I'll get the paste and, uh, and see how we get on. I'll just read you a little bit of the literature that comes with it. Standard paper back scenes. The paper used to produce these back scenes is 180 GMS thick, halfway to card, so it does not need every square inch or centimetre to be glued for it to remain in place. Always use the least amount of glue you can and never apply large quantities of paste or glue to the back scene prior to fitting it in place. Mounting a back scene is not like applying wallpaper. The paper is water resistant but not fully waterproof. If it becomes too wet it will swell slightly and cause bubbles. These will normally disappear if left to dry. Do not try and smooth them out as the result increases. When mounting paper back scenes it's important to apply the glue to the backboard and not the back scene and to allow a few moments of the moisture or solvent from the spray, uh, sorry from the spray glue to soak into the blackboard before pressing the back scene into place. The back scene should be smoothed down using either a soft cloth, cloth or a brush. Okay. I mentioned um, about the, uh, the Solvite um, wallpaper paste um, and this bag, and, and, and if you're going to use this, please make sure you've got the same one as I have. It's a 180, 185 gram bag and it says about the mixing instructions and wallpaper type. Well, according to um, the, the uh, manufacturer's literature, um, normal wallpapers including lining paper, we might just go for that. It's not a washable vinyl or textured or embossed because those type of wallpapers you'd use thicker, um, thicker mixes. So this one, if I was to use it the same as normal wallpapers including lining paper, then this bag will cover, will, cover, will last eight to ten rolls and we've probably got the best part of maybe one, one and a half rolls here um, and that takes seven litres of water. So what I shall do is, um, is do a little bit of maths and, uh, 
and then with my charming wife's um, kitchen scales uh, clearly my wife's at work at the moment and doesn't know I've got the kitchen scales um, I'll kind of work out um, how much the, the weight of how much glue I'm going to put in mix it up and then tell you the, show you the consistency and tell you how much I put in a little bit of maths and what I think it is I've done one litre of cold water and 25 grams of the wallpaper paste and you must add the paste to the water not the other way around if you put the water into the paste then it will just go claggy so hopefully um, using a, 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 this old screwdriver and then we'll screw some of that in and hopefully that should mix up okay So you put it in, stir briskly for 20 seconds, then leave it for 90 seconds and then stir thoroughly before use and you should be good to go. Well, we'll see. We're now an hour in by the way, it's now 10 to 4. That's the, uh, the 90 seconds gone by. Now hopefully you can see what the consistency of this is. It's kind of thinnish. What would you call that? It kind of falls from the, from the screwdriver. So it's not that thick. Um, and uh, I think we'll, uh, we'll see how that works out and we'll give it a go. I think I mentioned that what I intended to do was to um, paste half of it, half the wall at a time. I can't emphasise enough here because I've made this mistake so many times in the past of getting yourself into a mess. So I've got with me um, some towels I might need just to mop um, paste up because what I don't really want to do is get it on the back scene. So here we go, it's kind of do or type die time. So uh, that's the mark at the end of the back scene. So that's the uh, five foot mark because um, each one is five foot long so the two rolls in one uh, tube are ten foot so that's kind of about the halfway mark between there so this is the first part I'm going to do so we'll get our paste and slap it on the wall um, and hopefully quite thinly as was suggested by the documentation that came with them I'm making sure that I make I am getting it up to that line because I intend to put the back scene just over that line. I haven't done anything else to the wall, I haven't sealed it. What I did do was I repainted it um, a couple of weeks ago um, before I started bringing out the boards because you can't repaint it once the boards are in because that's kind of the end of it. Um, I'm trying not to get too much over the edges because otherwise you'll bring the wallpaper paste uh, back onto the back onto the back scene. So this is pretty pretty thin. It's certainly uh, thinner than I will be putting onto wallpaper. Okay, and it, as per the instructions, it said leave it for a little bit. So, uh, for the wall to absorb it, and hopefully that's had its time. Now the do or die bit. So at the end of the day, if this all goes to rats, I've lost 13 pounds. And 13 pounds is what? 16 tonne mineral wagon? It's, it's no big deal, is it? It just means I'd have to scrub the wall and take this off and start again. So um, it's no real expense. It's just a case of taking your time and trying to get it right. But I have one little worry, and that is, is this wall straight in accordance with this straight edge? Um, but I imagine we're just about to find out. So I'll offer it up into the corner and try to get it so it just covers the pencil line.
and hopefully when you run it out with this trusty wallpapering brush not really taking down the bottom. It seems to be uh, the wallpaper paste may be a bit thin there. I haven't put, perhaps I haven't put enough on the wall after all. There is a bubble there. bubble gone. The trouble is when you keep brushing it you can over brush it and stretch the paper. Checking that camera is running. Yeah, I've got some bubbles here and a bubble there, and I don't really like it. I think what I need is some blue tack to keep this paper up. Have faith. Now the wallpaper paste that I put on is almost gone, so I'm going to put some more on. I think the, the wall absorbed more, more paste than I, uh, I had really a, a, accounted for. The trouble is when the instructions say be very sparse with your glue you tend to perhaps overreact okay let's try it again Then hopefully with a bit of blue tack we can take the weight of the paper so I can kind of work it easier. Oops. Come on, yes, so. Okay, that's better. <laughs> it's not a bundle of laughs, is it? 
So what I need to do now is to peel it back, somehow support it, and then um, re and then paste up to this point here. When you think this is um, what is it, 13, 13, so seven quids worth of paper. I mean, it's not the end of the world if you do mess it up. Right, onward. So please add blue tack to the list of tools required, won't you? And to be perfectly honest, to have a third, uh, sorry, a second person here wouldn't do any harm either. Now, I think the mistake I made, I made a few minutes ago, was um, not giving enough time for the for the water to to suck in to draw in some of the uh, some of the moisture from the paste. So I'll hang on here a little bit longer, um, and. Uh, and see if it uh, it dries out a little bit before I add any more. What I don't want to do is put it back on to find it just falls off again um, because there's not enough paste on the wall because it's absorbed it. So here we go. I could sing you a song while I'm waiting, but I won't. Oh, boom. They kind of make them model railway, don't they? Back scenes. They kind of give you give it so much more depth. Right. I'll put a little bit more on. I always try cheap. Whoops! I always keep to try and drying the this wallpaper brush here, so you don't get excessive paste coming back onto it. Where this edge clip um, curls over is clearly an issue, but hopefully that will uh, soften up as it draws the paste in. I've got one bubble here. Another one there. Right, let's try and get rid of them. I think being right-handed, I would like to have worked the other way, from the other direction. Um, but because this scene will lap around the wall, um, I had to start at this end. And there is a bubble there. Though the ends have stopped peeling back now, at least. A 
and there is a bubble here and here which hopefully if I can't get rid of then hopefully we won't notice on the layout anyway because um, I have some some buildings and things to go in there I haven't quite, quite got to the stage where I rip it all down and throw it in the bin and try a different technique yet. But I can't seem to get rid of those bubbles. So we'll put it to the other bit and try a bit more paste underneath them. I think uh, I don't think that would work any better now. I think we are where we are with those. So I think we kicked off at ten to three. It's now ten past four, and I've uh, and I've got the first one up. So what I shall do now is, uh, is stop recording um, and persevere with the rest and uh, get back to you in a little while. Now in this corner the room is, is anything but square, um, it's 57.6 um, across here and 57.1 so there's four millimetres difference um, just because of the way uh, the room has been badly plastered to be perfectly honest. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this segment and fit that one and then I'll go back and fit the other one because otherwise when you, when you wallpaper it or when you paper it into the corner if it goes off at an angle then you'll find that the next piece will either go straight down or kind of straight up so you won't be able to, to keep it true um, so at least then if I go into the corner I then offer the other piece of paper up and then sort of um, take out the um, the anomaly by um, cutting the paper at an angle so it should fit in you'll see what I mean in a minute hopefully So there we go, if that wasn't hysterical enough I don't know what is, um, it hasn't been a joy but it's, I think it's thoroughly been rewarding, I'll spin the camera around now so you can have a, a decent look at the kind of almost finished uh, product, whoops, and uh, I think it looks very impressive and of course once the, uh, once the model railway boards are up against it um, then uh, It'll, uh, it'll look just the job really, so uh, yeah. So as I said earlier, the back scenes are from uh, Art Printers, that's www.art is in art-printers.com. These are ID back scenes and this is series 329 industrial packs A and B. And it kind of gave me what I want, which I didn't really want a big town scene because of 
uh, Chadwick Parkway, the station that will run along just here. And I think that will kind of work. Um, obviously, there's a bit of an air bubble here and there. Well, that's where a big tree will go. Um, but for, um, I think, pence under £30, I mean, it totally changes the, the look of it. Um, I am fortunate that I haven't had to kind of um, try to paper over the model railway to start with, so at least I can get reasonably close, you know, with these shelves in the way a little bit. Um, but there we go. I'll just re-emphasise one of the things that I do find quite remarkable is the fact, that, I don't know if you can see it, is that they will print a whole panel in reverse at the same price. So if I wanted those two panels reversed, it would be another, what is it, $14.99 or something, was it? Something like that. Was it? Yes, $27.98 actually for, um, for the two double packs. So yeah, so just over 30 quid, including the, uh, the wallpaper paste. Um, so yeah, it'll cost you another sort of 14 quid um, for two printed the wrong way around, if that makes any sense to you whatsoever. So there we go, really. That's the end of the back scene one. Now I can get on and put the boards against the wall and Chadwick will hopefully take a bit more shape. Um, as well, that just about wraps this one up. And I started at 10 to 3 and it's now a quarter past 5. So uh, two and a half hours work. And I, and I don't think that's too bad at all, to be perfectly honest. Some of you guys have expressed an interest um, in how the cameras I use and how I video it and how I like these videos and that kind of thing. And as I said before, I do have another channel called Charlie Bishop. And if you'd like to subscribe to that one, there should be a card coming in around here somewhere. And then once I get up to sort of you know, three or four hundred kind of um, subscribers, then I'll start doing those videos as well. Um, and of course, so that wraps this one up. I hope you enjoy it. I hope you like the back scenes, which you'll see obviously as the videos go on now. And please don't forget to subscribe. And there'll always be a video here and here if you're watching on the YouTube channel. In the meantime, take care. I'll hopefully see you next week. Have a great week. Thank you very much. Bye bye.